Hi everybody, this is Dr. Al in Australia. Hi everybody, this is Dr. Al in Australia. Good evening, Australia. Good afternoon, Iran. And good morning, the United States. Hi, welcome. Hello. Morning, afternoon, evening. Salam, welcome. Hi everyone, welcome aboard. Hi. Good evening, Australia. It's almost 11.30 uh, p.m. in Australia. It's uh, around 5 p.m. in Tehran and 7.30 in Denver, Colorado. And Ireland. Excited to have an interview with him. It's nine thirty in Toronto. Three thirty in Belgium. Yes, I'm going to have an interview with Nima Alam. Hopefully he will be in soon. Hello, Dr. Al. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good, hey, thank you, how are you? Great to see you. You too. So, hi everybody on the line. Yeah, everyone, uh, we just wait for one, one more minute for okay. people to join. Thank you for your time. Would you like to have tea or coffee or you had your... <laughs> I'm not that coffee guy. I had all my tea. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for your time. I know it's early in the morning in the States. So, thank you for your time. Sure. Glad to be here. Thank you. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to start the uh, chat. I don't call it an interview or interrogation. <laughs> it's a friendly chat with uh, a very special person and I'm going to uh, post it or upload it in our YouTube channel. So those who missed this uh, chat, they, they can watch it later. So I will, uh, Close the comments if that's okay. And if you have any questions uh, at the end of the uh, live, you can have uh, your questions asked and we are happy to answer any questions. So, um, should I call you Dr. Alam or Engineer Alam or Nima? Nima is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Nima, uh, could you uh, tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, my name is Nima Alam. So for, because it's a bit difficult to pronounce in English, Alam, I just call it Alam, uh, in English. Uh, my background is, uh, electrical engineering. Uh, I have, have uh, got my bachelor's degree in uh, telecommunications, uh, back in 1998. From Sharif then, but, University, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Sharif University. And uh, I got my uh, master's degree in control systems uh, in 2000. And then I entered the job market in Iran. Uh, I worked in uh, robotics and uh, automotive industry, automated guided vehicles and in those areas uh, for almost about eight years. And after that, uh, we decided to move to Australia. 
Uh, I went to Australia. I was there for uh, four or five years, four and a half years maybe. And uh, after that, uh, I got my PhD there in Australia, of course. And after that, uh, we moved to the U.S. And since late 2012, we are in the U.S. and uh, uh, are living here, working here. Uh, right now, I'm in uh, uh, Blue Origin as a uh, senior guidance, navigation, and control engineer. And uh, here we go. Uh, that's the brief introduction of myself. Very good. And, yeah. Perfect. Perfect introduction. <laughs> Uh, I have uh, a list of questions, uh, but please feel free to just uh, uh, pass any of them if you're not willing to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them might be unexpected. Uh, some of them uh, you might already know about it. So just if you uh, just feel free, if uh, you just want to leave a question, just say pass. Uh, but uh, first, uh, because I'm sure the audience will be uh, interested to know the differences between the life in the States and Australia, because you have lived in both. Uh, could you just compare uh, and contrast the life in Australia and uh, the U.S.? So yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So um, what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of? Yeah. This? So yeah, actually we loved Australia. When we moved to Australia, our plan was just staying there, working there, living there. Still, we still love Australia. So amazing country maybe at some point in the future we return to australia so it were in sydney or melbourne or i was in sydney so we moved to australia we had some plans i personally had planned to work and continue my job and you know expertise uh build on my expertise there but unfortunately we uh had that 2008 uh, uh global financial crisis economic crash and uh, for that reason you know the plans that i had were not uh went ahead as i expected so i took that opportunity to you know uh, uh work on my phd and then after that we decided to move to the us but australia itself it's a very very good country to live uh, we moved to the here is good. Here's some advantages here, some advantages there. But if you want a relaxed lifestyle, uh, lifestyle, sorry, and uh, the, not being worried about any other thing except your personal life and enjoying your life, Australia is the best place. But in the U.S., it's a bit different. So it's not uh, that bad, of course, but. Uh, in terms of, you know, uh, having the, at least for me, uh, have his, having a uh, satisfactory job and, uh, you know, doing what I really like to do in terms of my profession and job, U.S. is a better country for, for me. So that's it. Perfect. I guess a fair comparison. Very good. Uh, what does your job involve in Blue Origin? And uh, as a matter of interest, why it is called Blue Origin? Blue origin, blue is, is the earth. Earth is blue in the, no, no. Uh, not the sky. Not the sky. Just if okay. you look into the earth from the space, it is blue, like, like moon or other, you know, planets. Uh, it's blue because of the sea and, and the, you know, the, the, the water on that, the surface water. So the, the blue refers to earth and origin means we are in, in the earth and origin from now. The blue origin, uh, company uh, has a vision, very super ambitious vision of uh, uh, millions, of, millions of people living in space and uh, uh, for the benefit of Earth. So, this is the vision. People, millions of people live and work in space. Uh, in actually, in future, I don't know where it, where it can happen really, but. Uh, this is the main vision of the company, and but getting to that point, uh, uh, you know, it's not easy. You know, first of all, it should be economically reasonable. Right now, with the current technology, it is very difficult to send you know, one kilogram of load space 
So when you think about millions of people, so it means that, so there's much more to do to get to that point. So now Blue Origin is uh, paving the way towards that goal. Uh, it's not only Blue Origin, there's a couple of other companies, private sector companies, which are doing this, but because I'm in Blue Origin, I can explain more about that. So moving the people to space, for example, living and working in space stations or the next available destination will be moon, uh, needs to you know, have some infrastructure over there. So moving those infrastructure to space means we need some technology, some rockets that are capable of moving those heavy loads and everything and infrastructure to space. So these are the main areas that Blue Origin is working on right now. And uh, I think it might be of particular interest to our audience uh, as uh, I guess the, this company is owned by Jeff Bezos. Is that right? Yeah, this is a Jeff Bezos company. Good. And have you ever had a meeting with him or uh, have you like? No, I, I have not had a meeting so far with him, but he, he, he is around. So he, he has some, you know, actually I'm in Denver office, you know, uh, so that's the thing, but the headquarters in, uh, is in um, Seattle. Oh, good. Yeah. Very good. And uh, what is your dream job? Is it your dream job or you have a, another dream job? Uh, no, I would say my dream job is a job that I really like to do. And this is, this is one of those jobs. You know, this, is the not, this is not the only job, my dream job or the job I like, but this is one of those jobs that I like. And uh, looking back into my career path, it has been around and focused on this, you know, um, let's say GNC, uh, even when I started my job in Iran. Perfect. And uh, did you ever have any role models uh, in your life uh, in terms of job or uh, in general? Not really, it's not, not a person. Uh, so, but I have been in some situations like, you know, even in high school, surrounded by many, you know, talented students, you know, with many bright minds and, you know, uh, many good goals for achievements and progress in future. So, and even in the university, the same. So the, I would say that society uh, was more of a role model for me than a specific person that, hey, I want to be like that. I'm like, there's no. Good. Uh, what has been your three ingredients to success? Okay, first of all, I, I would not use the word success. I, I cannot consider my, uh, myself a successful person, but, but I can say so. Because, you know, I recently coined a word and I'm going to suggest it to Oxford or Longman to add it to their uh, list of vocabulary and it's high chai uh, for high achievers. I think you are one of those high chais. I would say achievements. So everybody has some achievements, so, uh, more or less. So I have some achievements, that, that, that's true, but uh, successful, being successful is a big work. Uh, I'm not there yet. But anyway, so you ask about three ingredients. So I would say the first thing is my passion. So whatever I've done so far, uh, I've passion for that uh, and I, I say it's very important to for everybody to be passionate about whatever they do in order to do it correctly and perfectly and the next the next thing is maybe I have been very uh, perfectionist or perfectionism so whatever I've started to do I've tried to do it in a perfect way as much as I could. So it's not like, eh, let's do this, mm, you know, it passes, you know, let's go to the ne uh, next thing to do. No, no, whatever, even simple things. Uh, I've been trying to do it very perfectly. And, and the next ingredient, maybe I, I usually pay attention to details. So that's another thing which yeah, I remember it, it. It has been very helpful for me uh, attending to details. Perfect. So uh, it's a good 
uh, if I want to just uh, sum up uh, what you just said, so you were passionate, you were a bit of a perfectionist, and you had keen uh, attention to detail. Uh, very good. Absolutely. And have you ever had any failures, and how did you react? Oh, sure. It's, uh, without failure, you cannot have any achievements. So that, that's for sure. So failures. Uh, I, yeah, I can have some examples of technical failures in job, but I would say another example, which is more, more meaningful for me, and I guess it's more important. So the, the main fail, one of the failures that I had was uh, the fact that when we moved to Australia, our plans were not uh, uh, going ahead as expected. So I went to Australia, I had relatively good resume with me, in terms of having eight years of job in high-tech you know, industries, uh, robotics, intelligent robotics, automated guided vehicle, control systems, and everything. And also maybe you know, four, or five, four or five years of uh, uh, managerial positions. You know. And then I said, okay, uh, we, go, we go there and uh, everything will be good. You know, I will find a job, but we had that unexpected at this for us was an unexpected situation that a uh, global economic crash happened and all hiring were frozen uh, for that time, uh, 2008, 2009. And uh, all of a sudden I noticed that, hey, I'm in a situation that you know, I, I cannot expect the job I was looking for in that time. So I tried for a few months and uh, I saw that, no, this is not, going to work for me and uh, now what can we do? I remember many people returned to Iran so that time we're almost not the starting but very beginning of moving people from Iran to Australia under skilled migration uh, programs and those sort of things. I remember some people returned to Iran because of that uh, but I said okay let's take this uh, threat and convert it to an opportunity. I decided to continue my PhD there I didn't have any plan before moving to Australia for a PhD. And that was a good opportunity because uh, I entered Australia with permanent residency. So PhD was free. That's, that's a good point. And uh, also I had a few publications from my master's degree eight years ago. And with that, I could get some scholarships. So I took that opportunity, I jumped and uh, applied for PhD immediately after a few days, I got the offer and I started. And I said, okay, so th this is, this, this, that was one failure, which I could not, not do my, uh, now run my plan, but I changed it to another opportunity, yeah. Okay. And perfectly understand uh, your situation because uh, my arrival coincided with COVID. I mean, it was uh, oh. like March 2020 when I arrived and uh, the week after they closed the borders, everywhere were closed. Most unis and uh, educational centers that I was applying to were almost shut down. So yeah, it was a, a big challenge for me as well. So I can perfectly understand your condition. Uh, and uh, who had the greatest impact on your life? Uh, is it God or religion, yourself, family, partner? Uh, or if you want to just give a percentage, uh, how would you rate it? <laughs> okay. First of all, let's let's. I would I would put God out of the equation because you know, uh, I think God has much more important things to do than helping me. Uh, so, and by the way, if I say God helped me, somebody can ask, uh, hey, why God helped you, but yeah. didn't help me, and yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have any answer for that. There was discrimination. <laughs> yeah, so, so I don't have any answer for that. So I would say first uh, is, is, is myself, and I think everybody's, you know, uh, uh, efforts in life and trying to achieve whatever they want is the main main factors because unless you don't want that you cannot you cannot get there so so myself family is very important because going through these sort of you know challenges in life if you do not have if you have a family if you're single and do not have any family depending on you or living with you or but if you have a family in relation with you 
do. So support from them is very important because otherwise you cannot uh, go through your plans and implement whatever you want to do. Uh, uh, and that's challenging. So I would say myself and family. Yeah. Very good. Uh, before we go any further, I should uh, commend you for, I mean, uh, it, it's, a, it's a, a real proof that you do everything at its best because you speak English very well. <laughs> It's unlike what we think of all Iranians who speak slowly with a, a very heavy accent. And I really, really take my hat off uh, to you because of this uh, good accent and good speed, uh, good intonation. Oh, thank you. It's, I should, uh, I'm proud. Okay. And uh, what is your favorite food? And is there any food that you dislike or hate? Yeah, sure. I go with hate first. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't like seafood, Any, anything under sea level, I cannot eat, so <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's my rule. Oh, okay. uh, so that's, that's and, and you know, that was a shame in Australia, of course, you know, this, that great seafood in Australia, but yeah, that, that's the way for me. Uh, so, but the food I really like is Fesenjun uh, Gilani with uh, sour pomegranate paste, the white ones, not the you know, sweet ones, mm. and fresh garlic, and uh, local chicken. And then are uh, you originally from North? No, I'm, I'm just asking. No, okay. no, I, I've just had this viewers. opportunity to to enjoy this this meal <laughs> okay. and and with the sticky rice yeah and when was the last time you were in iran it was mm, almost two years ago two years ago so it was yep. almost recent good yep. and uh, what is this what is the strangest food you have ever had strangest food crocodile crocodile you have yep. it yeah how in sydney was it that was good. Oh, good that was good it, you know we just wanted to try that it was in uh, i don't remember where it was that in, uh, somewhere around harbor bridge one of the restaurants there but we saw in the menu it's a kind of crocodile meat and we say hey let's try it so definitely i wanted to try that we tried that and that was good actually very you know it's sweet bit of taste you, at the at the end yeah you're kind of adventurous in that regard uh i don't know <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite restaurant or cafe uh, uh, where you live or in general oh uh, uh, i would say we usually go to mediterranean restaurants and cuisines that is our more favorite destination for food. But we really enjoy other cuisines like Indian, like American, you know, they have good restaurants. Yeah. Good. Uh, this is a, an interesting one. If you were an animal, what animal you would like to be and why? Hmm. Animal. Maybe I would like to be a cheetah. Run fast. Okay. <laughs> cool. fast. <laughs> yeah. So you are always kind of, you know, you want to uh, just run ahead of others and be the pioneer or something. Mm, not, not, not really. That's a good point. I haven't, you know, I don't remember that I've compared myself with anybody else to, you know, pass on or, you know, be ahead of somebody. But I've always been, you know, kind of uh, uh, eager to move fast. Don't, waste time so because time is limited so you don't have a lot of time a lot of time yeah and almost on the same level what's your favorite car my favorite car uh my favorite car i like those uh you know old frog shaped volkswagens you know, beetles Beatles, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Good. So, uh, because you're a tech kind of person, you don't, you're not into Tesla or something, like. 
Uh, uh, Electric car. No, not really. So yeah, I, I see t hybrid. Tesla and other hybrid. Uh, you know, first of all, he, here's the, I don't know, the, the gas is still cheap here. So having a, 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 a usual car is better for me and more, you know, obviously more gas stations and things. And for electric cars, right now it doesn't work for me because, because I have a line coming through the highway. And you know, these cars, one of the options, you know, one of the aspects of these cars is that uh, they take advantage of regenerative braking system. So when I'm on highway, that advantage is gone. So uh, so for that reason, at least it will, I, I should be in charging the stations and you know, it will be a you know, headache. But uh, right now I prefer just the normal gas cars. What has been your best travel destination that you recommend to our audience, those who are in the States or in that city, that you, in Denver, or like in, 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 the, in general in the States? Or oh, in the abroad, US? Wherever, we... anywhere. Okay, so in general, I would say I really enjoyed New Zealand. So that, that's, that's the end of the world. No, so you can go there and relax and you know, because of the nature or nature peace. people peace and everything you have been in australia you think you're thinking in a relaxing country as i said it's very relaxing good area in australia very but late when back. you go very late back. but if you go to new zealand australia is somewhere like the u.s for new zealanders <laughs> so <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah so that's a good destination to try at least yeah. sure maybe i will in the future uh and uh, going back to your english uh because again my area of expertise and uh, you know uh i would like to know and many audience uh want to know how did you learn your english and which skill do you think is the most challenging uh i learned in, no i started learning in, uh, english and um where was that iran language institute in Jam Street in Tehran. Mm -hmm. When I was in former Iran America Society. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I started there while I was in high school, and then uh, I would say the big thing that helped me in English was my business travels when I started my job in industry. So we are importing many technologies to automotive industry at that time. So I had this opportunity, fortunately, to visit many other countries, mainly European countries, and uh, for business purposes. And that helped me a lot and helped me to, you know, push me to talk. So uh, I would say that's, that was very important. And that basis from Iran Language Institute was very helpful. And then we moved to Australia. And, and the US. So which yeah. skill of English do you think is the most challenging? Is it grammar or listening or vocabulary or speaking? Mm, I would say maybe uh, speaking is a challenge. It's, you know, when we think from from Iran perspective, from people who live in Iran, because the, the environment that we learn English in Iran is a bit, you know, difficult to have a good accent for English. So, and when you get that accent, it's very difficult to get rid of that. So that, that would be the challenging part. Grammar, you know, for day-to-day -day life or even for job, you know, I don't have had any problem with grammar and writing. Maybe writing is important, but yeah, for, for professional jobs, but yeah. How important was English in your life or career in finding a job, for example? That was absolutely important because uh, once I stepped out from Iran, entered Australia for applying for a job, even doing my PhD, everything, uh, you know, English was the first thing uh, I needed to be able to get to the point that I wanted to. So either it's in, uh, in the university, at the university or job or whatever, yeah. Perfect. And uh, what do you do in your free time? Do you ever ha do you have any free time or that's a work? good <laughs> no uh, yes, yeah the free time is uh, a very scarce thing to me these days but maybe over the past couple few years but really uh, if we find any free time we right like uh, enjoy the first of all we are in Colorado we enjoy the beautiful nature of Colorado in different seasons different attractions activities here 
uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, and uh, enjoying my free time with my toddler son, four year old son, Good. which is very time consuming. And you know, uh, his name yeah, was Ryan, yeah, Ryan, oh. yeah. Yeah, good. And uh, do you play any musical instruments or uh, do you listen to any kind of music? What kind of music do you like? Uh, I'm not playing. When I was, maybe the last time I was playing a keyboard, it was in high school. And after that, I just, my keyboard is still in Iran, you know, the electronic keyboards. Mm. Uh, I was uh, enjoying playing that, uh, but I never uh, pursued that music thing professionally but it was as a hobby I had that time but right now you know I enjoy more pop music okay. yeah. and uh, do you have any uh, who's your favorite uh, Iranian or foreign singer Iranian singer singer hmm. uh, Iranian singers maybe I, I'm not familiar with the uh, current Iranian singers. Uh, I, I like, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Shajarian's uh, uh, works, but new people, new singers, I don't know them. Uh, but, you know, from this side, I like many of those older LA, let's say, <laughs> <laughs> singers. So oh, okay. average, yeah. So cool. And uh, who's your favorite Iranian or foreign actor or actress? Foreign uh, or Iranian actor. Uh, Mr. Antazami was one of the best one that I was enjoying his works. Uh, again, recently, I don't know many recent actors right now, but uh from those days which we were watching those movies you know mr antizami was one of them i like that perfect and uh, could you uh, rate like or name uh, your top three movies or series that you would like to recommend uh i can say what i like but i cannot maybe recommend that but uh because you know, I, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not a guy that actively looking for some sort of movie or a series coming up, something like that. It, it has been never like that. But uh, I had the opportunity to enjoy um, for series like Friends. I like that series. You know, Big Bang Theory. That was kind of a series that I liked. For movies, so you're more more into sitcoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. So, but for movies, yeah, actually, I, I like a, an Iranian movie a lot, and I have watched that movie a few times. And the name is The Tenants. I don't yeah. know if you have seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, I, I think that You're was a very, very good. By, uh, Darius Mehtri. Yeah, exactly. So that was a masterpiece. Masterpiece in Iranian movie yeah. history, I would say. Yeah. And do you recommend any books or have you read any books recently or do you have time to read books? Uh, uh, again, unfortunately, uh, no, I'm not uh, that person of having plans for regularly reading books. The, the last book I was reading and I had to read was, I don't know, that was something technical here about uh, numerical methods and integrated navigation system, which is not relevant to your question, of course, but before that, uh, maybe I remember I was who moved my cheese Some, yeah, that was it okay. yeah. mm -hmm. um, anything in life sorry your voice got a bit choppy what was that again do you regret anything in life do I regret anything in my life mm. I no, I don't have anything to tell about here. <laughs> yeah. Very good. And uh, what piece of advice would you give the young generation or uh, the youngsters? Um, I would say, you know, definitely have a goal in your life and uh, 
try to of course you're young by the way uh you're young but (laughs) young okay so thank you for for your attention in that area so yeah so yeah first of all have a goal try for that try for dreams uh it's not easy for everyone no i see this uh, i'm not very involved in social media for sure i've already received some uh, follow requests on instagram just that you know there's nothing to follow there <laughs> because i'm not active in instagram yeah. if you have something that you want to follow just connect me to on linkedin if you want to talk yeah. uh, so uh yeah have some goals plan for your goals go for your dreams there's difficulties for sure don't expect that you uh you know to achieve uh something very easily don't look into social media and say hey these are these people are you know rich or whatever that you is your dream but and think that they have achieved those things very easy and freely so you no know, just be focused you, on you, what you, you do you never envied anyone you never what sorry and you never envied anyone's success or anyone's life no good and my last question before we uh, ask the audience if they have any questions that they want to ask is on the scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you with your life or what is your level of life satisfaction? Mm, I would give it a six, just a bit above average. Mm, good. If you're a six, <laughs> mine is a one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very, it's very particular thing. You no, know, very individual dependent and you no. Know, very good. So. And something, something, my last question that just popped into my mind, and it could be related to what you're doing, is uh, now they are talking about UFOs and, uh, you know, things. It has become, again, it has revived. What is the, uh, your opinion about UFOs or UFOs? UFOs. I personally believe there should be something out there for sure. So, you know, if you look in, in space and see billions of billions of, you know, planets and you know uh, uh galaxies and those sort of things it's definitely something out there it's not us only the center of everything for sure but the fact that they have been around us they have been trying to approach us they have spotted some of them in the sky here mainly in the u.s i don't know why so maybe i'm not uh you know, i'm a bit hesitant about those parts but definitely i believe there's something out there which we don't know about do you think uh, we, we, we will be able to travel to moon any soon? Oh, that's a good p- question, actually. So it's in the, on the plan. So Artemis, do you, I don't know if you're familiar with the Artemis programs of NASA, but Artemis 1 just already went and come back, came back. Artemis 2 is going to go around moon with some uh, astronauts on, the bo- on board. Around the moon and come back, Artemis 3 will be uh this is these are nasa programs and uh artemis 3 is uh, astronauts on artemis going to the moon landing and come back to the earth uh and blue origin is scheduled for artemis 5 to land on moon some astronauts so that's and the plan is you know you can google it and uh find it this plan is until uh, by 2029 that's the plan. Artemis Five. Just stay Good. tuned. Good. <laughs> so you, your uh, work also involves with like uh, excursions to planets and stuff, or to the space. Uh, uh, my my personal work is mainly right now is a uh, navigation part of the things. You no, know? and you know navigation is a bit challenging in space because you know, of the technologies and sensors that are available but yeah i'm mainly focused on that part right now thank you very much uh, okay uh خب دوستان اگر سوالی دارن یه مقدارم شیفت میکنیم فارسی یه چند دقیقه ام چون بعضیا شاید نتونن فالو بکنن uh, خیلی ممنون ایما جان how can we improve english skill when uh, so i will talk about it later if you have any questions that you want to ask nima my good friend you can ask Many people are joining now, but you're almost at the end of our interview or chat better to say. Okay. 
نیما جان خیلی خیلی ممنون اگرم ممکنه یه توضیح کوتاه فارسی هم بگی چون بعضی هایی میپرسن که اگه میشه فارسی بگین که مثلا شغلتون در شرکت چیه و کارتون چی هست اگه ممنون میشن بگین خواهش من شغل من توی شرکت بلو اوریژین مهندسی مهندسی فارسیش میشه هدایت نووری و کنترل دیگه کنترل دیگه فارسیش هم کنترل میگن که حالا من الان بیشتر تو قسمت نویگیشن یا همون ناوریش مشغول هستم این کار فعلی این فوکوسشون هست و حالا به طور خیلی خیلی خلاصه خروجی ناوبری اینه که شما بدونی موقعیتت کجاست سرعت چقدر جهتت کجاست این کل داستان اینه که به صدا شما باید جوابشو بدید من الان روی این قضیه دارم کار میکنم الان تو فقط من نیستم یه موقع اشتباه نشیندم شرکت بول اوریژین نمیدنم هفت هزار تا پرسنل داره و افرادی که مثل من با تخصص من هستن تو این شرکت شاید حداقل ده پونزه نفر دیگه هستن که با این تخصص تو کار میکنن چون فقط کار یک نفر نیست و خب ما ایرانی هم هست ایرانی هم هستم بله بله ایرانی هم هستن ایرانی ها بیشتر تو خود به صدا قسمت من گفتم سیاته و بعدی کنت هست کنت یه شهر کچیک تری بقل دست سیاته هست so, uh, که الان هدکارترز اونجا هست ایرانی ها بیشتر اونجا هستن اینجا ایرانی من نهیدم دو دفتر دنور هست uh, من به صدا رو این قضیه کار میکنم و یه قسمت خیلی کوچیکی از این حالا کار از این بیداره انجام میشه خیلی خیلی کوچیک و سعی میکنم که کمکی بکنم این قسمت چون خیلی برای شنونده و بیننده ها به نظرم جذابه این که راجب سفرهای حالا تفریحی یا سفرهایی به طور کلی به فضا اگه اونم یه طور کوتاه خیلی بگی ممنون میشن که چه اتفاقی حالا... داره میفته و چه اتفاقاتی قراره بیفته. بله هم هم دیگه گفتم هدف بسیار شرکت این هستش که و این شرکت و شرکت های مشابهی که بخش خصوصی هستن میشه مثل اسپیس اکس اونا برن رو همین زمین ها کار میکنن که بتونن یه مقدماتی رو فرام کنن که میدون ها نفر بتونن خارج از زمین تر فضا یا اولین مقصد این کره ماه بشه ما اونجا زندگی کنن برای اینکه کمتر دیگه به زمین آسیب برسه ریسورس هایی که رو زمین هست محدود هست و از ریسورس هایی که اونجا هست منابعی که اونجا هست استفاده بشه خب برای این قضیه یه سری زیر ساختا لازم هست این سادگی ها نیست که بگیم خب یه پروژه تعریف کنیم چند پروژه تعریف کنیم بالاخره میریم نه چون خیلی چیز گرونی هست و یه چند تا مقدمه خیلی به صدا اساسی بگم داره که هنوز تو تکنولوژی های امروزی نیست اشال دارن روش کار داریم روش کار میکنیم داره به وجود میاد ویدیوهاش هم هست توی یوتیوب برای بر مثال مثلا تکنولوژی تکنولوژی که حالا تا الان بوده راکت که میفرستن بالا حالا در یه بار مثلا وقتی میره دیگه وقتی برگشتی تو کار نیست که خانه استفاده کنن خب این مروم به صرفه نیست حالا یکی از این چیزهایی که باید بس اون قضیه که میلیون ها نفر حالا توی فضا و کرات دیگه زندگی کنن اینه که راکت هایی باشه که برگش پذیر باشه رو بزن یعنی برگرده مثل او پیمان برگرده بشنه دوباره بره بالا خب این محروم صرفه میتونه بکنه قضیه رو و اینکه راکت هایی که بتونن بار با خودشون ببرن یعنی هر کیلوگرم بار بردن به فضا به برنامه که هست میلیون ها دلار هزینه داره خب با این اسکیل که نمیشه بنابراین راکت که بتونن بار سنگین ببرن اونا تکنولوژی هست و اینا الان چلنج هایی هست که بیشتر پیش روی شکل هست البته خب ما چیزای حالا بلو اوریژن چیز حالا اسمش رو میذاریم حالا تفریحی حالا میتونیم بذاریم که میاد بله تا ساب راکت های ساب اوربیتال هست که میره بالای تا اونجا که بالاخره بی وزنی هست مسافراتی مسافرایی که به صورت علاقه من هستن با هزینه که ما نمیدونیم حالا چقدر هست من نمیدونم حداقل میرم بالا انشالله مثل این چیز تایتانیک نشه که میرم رفتن برای تایتانیک آره اونم بالاخره ما یکی از چیزهای مهم شرکت همین بحث سیفتی و اینا هست 
که حالا میرم بالا و حالت بیوزنی واسه چند دقیقه ده دقیقه اینطور را تجربه میکنم میام پایین حالا اون, حالا اون تکنولوژی اون بحث راکت های چیز رو داره دیگه یعنی اونجا داره استفاده میشه اون برمیگرد دوباره میشینه بعد دوباره استفاده میکنم مقدمه یه برای اون کار اصلی یکی از دوستان پرسیدن راجع به مأموریت خانم یاسمین مقبلی اطلاعاتی دارین یا میدونین چیکار میکنن نه در همون حد که توی اخبار و آنلاین هست چیز جدایی از اون نمیدونم خیلی خیلی لطف کردی من دیگه نمیخوام خیلی طولانی بشه وقت تو بگیرم چون میدونم روز کاری در پیش داری و خیلی افتخار دادی باعث افتخار ما هستین خیلی لطف کردین دوستان آشنا شدن با یه ایرانی موفق هم از لحاظ شخصیتی هم از لحاظ شغل هم از لحاظ زبانی که برای من باعث افتخار بود خیلی ممنون خیلی ممنون که این فرصت پیش اومد ایمان جان که قربان شما روزت بخیر نسیم صحبت داشته باشم مرسی خدا 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 خدا